I think in just about every single case, Candida is self-diagnosed. And what's crazy about Candida is a few years ago, only a few years ago, it wasn't viewed as something real. And if you go to a doctor, especially a gastroenterologist, and say you have Candida, they're going to dismiss it, put you on proton pump inhibitors, and your health is probably going to get worse and worse and worse. You know, when people are having those digestive issues or brain fog, they start Googling their symptoms and candida comes up and then they think that's what it is. And then they'll go to all of these doctors, usually never end up getting better. Uh, some very like high-end holistic doctors might be able to alleviate symptoms, prevent things from getting worse, but medical doctors especially are not trained in nutrition and they don't have a super extensive understanding of biochemistry involved in nutrition. The practical experience is important too. Some of those doctors will have clients where they help their digestive issues, but most solutions have been discovered by people with the issue themselves. Now, I've done videos on iron in the past, probably half a dozen of them, explaining how it can damage the liver, how most people have excess iron stores in their body, that most of the time, it's a past deficiency of synergistic nutrients causing the body to not utilize iron properly. But from a digestion perspective, consuming large amounts of iron might be making you feel horrible on a daily basis because candida thrives off heavy metals, including iron. And if you don't know what candida is, it's a strain of fungus yeast in your gut microbiome that normally occurs in smaller amounts, but it can grow out of control in certain disease states. And by disease states, I mean, you know, something is wrong with your health. In younger people, you know, it'll happen in like people in cities, drinking a lot of alcohol, following horrible diets, you know, they're exposed to a lot of radiation. There's a lot of alcohol, sugar, undigested food in their body, and there are community toxins. So candida in a way is almost trying to save the day. Iron will make candida worse. And some of you might be wondering, Oh, what about all these carnivore dieters that cured their candida? The carnivore diet is a band-aid. Might work for a few months, might work for a few years, but when that person's digestive problems come back, it's gonna be that much harder to fix it with more iron stores and whatever sort of liver damage the carnivore diet causes. Whether you're eating a steak or iron-fortified cereal, multivitamin, the candida, will hold on to the iron from those foods and grow, grow, grow. Although I'm assuming candida is working in a protective capacity to attempt to clear the excess iron in your body, you'll still feel horrible when it happens. Even if candida overgrowth is the best thing in the world from a healing your body perspective, you will feel horrible, horrible, horrible. And it doesn't just apply to the foods you're eating. If you have excess iron stores in the liver, and the iron's being released in the bile, that will also fuel the candida overgrowth, as any other heavy metals or toxins can also do when they're excreted in the bile from the liver. So the first study we have is iron at the center of candida albicans interaction. Iron is an absolute requirement for both the host and most pathogens alike and is needed for normal cellular growth. The acquisition of iron by biological systems is regulated to circumvent toxicity of iron overload as well as the growth deficits imposed by iron deficiency. Opportunistic pathogens such as Candida albicans are able to adapt to extremes of iron availability such as the iron replete environment of the gastrointestinal tract and iron deficiency during systemic infection. C. albicans has developed a complex and effective regulatory circuit for iron acquisition and storage to circumvent iron limitation within the human host. So the study claims that candida is an opportunistic pathogen. The researchers not seeming to understand that candida is a normal component of the gut microbiome. And by finding that candida can function in various levels of iron saturation, we can assume candida might not actually need iron at all itself. Yeah, if the person is sick, weakened immune system, destroyed gut bacteria, their body will succumb to candida in extreme circumstances, almost always under medical care with antibiotics, high radiation environments to remove the body's natural defense systems. Next up we have fungal iron availability during deep-seated candidiasis is defined by a complex interplay 
involving systemic and local events. Changes in renal iron distribution were apparent early in the infection process before large fungal lesions had developed and significant tissue damage was incurred. So deep-seated candidiasis is a very severe fungal infection where the candida has migrated to major organ systems, the spleen, the kidneys, and mortality rates are very high despite receiving antifungal medications. So that candida in your gut can actually branch out through the intestinal wall into other parts of your body. Now in that study, if they found that iron distribution was altered in the kidneys before the fungal damage occurred, how can the candida be viewed as the problem? If the candida was the issue, the fungal infection would have been there in the first place and we would see the kidney damage before, not after the candida is there. I would guess, as I've said several times now, the candida is migrating to organ tissues to attempt to help the body detox toxins and heavy metals. Think about it. You have a lot of toxins in your liver. The candida starts growing. It's trying to pull the toxins out, but you don't fix your diet, you don't fix your lifestyle, you're still consuming toxins. Those toxins continue to get stored in the liver, continue to go to the other organ systems. The candida is just growing and growing and growing, trying to detox those toxins, and eventually it's going to migrate to pull those toxins out of your kidneys, pull those toxins everywhere. So hypothetically, if you're perfectly healthy, zero toxins, the candida will go away, which most people don't get to that point. Candida albicans requires iron to sustain hyphal growth. Iron uptake genes are induced by signals that can support prolonged hyphal development in an iron-dependent manner. So hyphae for fungus are like roots for a tree. The candida uses them to branch out to those other tissues in the body. If the candida can't develop hyphae, then it theoretically can't infiltrate other tissues maybe just a smaller amount through the intestinal wall. And th yeah, there's a lot of stuff to ask here. So we know iron excess, any toxin or metal excess can cause candida issues. And people do have candida without iron overload. Those fruitarians, uh, vegans, I mean, they still might have some iron, but we know it's possible to have it without a complete overload. Assumingly, you have some sort of other toxin load or nutrient excess, I wouldn't be surprised if candida overgrowth actually resulted in iron toxicity itself. Can the candida be so overloaded with other toxins that it cannot hold on to the iron as well? You know, I don't think any studies have really been done on that, like a priority system. Maybe they have from like that priority perspective of what the candida is going to go for in the digestive system first. If you know too much iron comes out of the liver, but there's also an excess of halogens like fluoride or other toxins like chemicals, what is the candida gonna grab onto first? The metals, the chemicals, what's gonna get reabsorbed? So point is, uh, you have to make drastic lifestyle dietary changes for pretty long periods of time to, to fix an issue like this where there would be so many toxins in the body. So my main point is if you're having candida, if you're having digestive issues, uh, there really isn't a quick fix, but if you get yourself on the right track, you should be feeling a lot better very quickly within one to two weeks. So uh, I put some websites over there, guys, for the first time. We have consultations on frank-stefano.com, water key for the best probiotic on frankiesfreerangefoods.com. We have masticum available on organsupplements.com, the uh, antimicrobial that's least damaging to the liver and we have Wi-Fi protective clothing on wifishilling.com which is also incredibly important for gut health now hypothetically you know if you had a good probiotic if you were taking masticum if you had this protective clothing candida would not have happened in the first place but the catalyst the combination of all of the negative factors that most people put themselves into the situations over and over and over again then you have these severe health issues that you really have to buckle down on every single thing. So thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully you've learned a little something and you've enjoyed this video. If you can please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check the notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.
Thank you.